Welcome back to part two of the Book One Cozy's Club chapter by chapter for Guidebook to Murder, the first book in the Tourist Trap Mystery series by Lynn Cahoon. I'm Di and this is my audio only reading vlog for this book. Today I will be reading chapters five through eight and sharing my thoughts with you along the way. Due to the nature of this reading vlog, there will be spoilers. So if you haven't read these chapters yet, I suggest that you not listen to this recording until you have. If you would prefer to hear my general thoughts on this book in its entirety, Keep an eye out for my Book One Cozy's Club series first impressions video, which will be posted sometime after the reading vlogs for this book have commenced. So how is everybody doing this evening? I am doing well. The temperatures where I am have not decided to decline yet. So we're bouncing back and forth between mid 70s and high 80s. And I am not happy about it. <laughs> I really 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 despise hot weather if you've listened to any of my chapter by chapters before or even watched some of my videos that were posted during the summer you probably already know this but i am ready for cooler temperatures i'm ready for the fuzzy blankets and the hot drinks and all of the winter vibes that being said it is warm today, or it was warm today. It has cooled down now since it's the evening, but I'm just very unhappy with the weather during the day. <laughs> so, I am looking forward to getting into today's chapters. I really enjoyed the experience of listening to the audiobook and knitting as I had mentioned I was working on my dad's sock. I did finish it. I started the next one. So I am going to be listening to the audiobook again and working on the sock some more. And maybe if I'm able to keep up with the audiobook the entire time, I might even be able to get my dad's sock done before or by time um, this chapter by chapter project is done for this book so that would be exciting because that would mean that one christmas gift net is off the needle so let's strive for that and so i am going to go ahead and dive into chapter five right now and i will be back with you in a bit so i just finished chapter eight I thought it was really weird that Jill would answer a phone call expecting it to be somebody without verifying and then just immediately answer whoever was calling's question. Maybe that's just me. I'm not the type of person that will answer calls that are not from numbers I recognize. Um, you know, I figure if it's important they'd leave a message and then I'd call back at least I'd know who it was before divulging important information like where I was because like why would you tell somebody you don't even know who's calling where you were because you know they could be casing your house they could want to break in I, I guess I'm not just trusting of people <laughs> But she didn't even do that only one time. She did that when the officer called and then immediately after just assuming it was him again answered the phone the same way and got that threatening phone call. So yeah, I thought that was really strange. I'm also finding that with the audiobook, the cadences of the lines as they're being delivered some of them sound not right to me like the cadences are weird some of the sentences are kind of left on an up note as opposed to a down sounding more finalized and more of a statement than a question when the line is supposed to be a statement and not a question so 
little things like that are bothering me about the narration, but I'm still enjoying where this book is going. I think the author does a great job of leaving off the chapter with a cliffhanger. So obviously, in light of things that have happened now, at the very end of chapter 8, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens in chapter 9 and the subsequent chapters to see how this thing all plays out. And I'm really interested to know what happened to Amy. Do we think that the mayor got rid of her? It was kind of strange how fast the mayor came up with a fill-in for Amy when she didn't show up for work that day. And now even Joe can't get in touch with her. So obviously something's happened, whether she's just stuck in an area without her cell phone or something bad's happened to her. So I'm really interested in finding out about that. I'm also curious about the timeline on the papers that Joe was served about the house. Like, in the previous section, Miss Emily was talking about how she had received this letter, and I presume that the letter that Joe got, or was served with, is the same letter that Miss Emily was talking about. But in light of everything that has happened with Miss Emily passing and Jill just recently inheriting the property, I think the 30 days to get everything done is rather short, kind of unusual. Um, I would think that because everything hasn't been transferred and, you know, Obviously, the will was just read, and papers haven't been finalized. Well, Jill signed the papers in these chapters, but to only give her 30 days to get everything done on something that she just inherited is kind of short. And like Amy had mentioned uh, when we had heard from her in yesterday's chapters, they didn't say they were serving papers or giving her a warning um so yeah everything's kind of weird with that and obviously major renovation on a house will take a while especially depending on the weather if the weather is not good and say rains they have to stop construction so that will make the time that it takes to get everything done take longer so yeah, it's just really unreasonable, and I realized that maybe they were probably after Miss Emily for a while to get all of the things done, but to serve the new owner with papers so shortly after the previous owner passed, that's just wrong to me. But you know, things like that definitely happen, so I'm hoping that we find out more information about the inconsistency where... Amy was saying, yeah, they talked about it at the meeting, but, you know, no formal papers were going to be sent as to now, where not only did we hear that Miss Emily had papers, but now Jill has been served with what I guess would be the same papers. So, yeah, looking forward to finding out more information on that. Looking forward to finding out more information about where Amy is, where she could possibly be. Hopefully nothing bad has happened. Just things about the mayor and his actions are seeming kind of fishy to me at the moment. And yeah, a little bit of discourse there with the officer uh, supposedly being married. Did his brother drop that little tidbit as a like a get away from my brother type of thing because maybe he wants his brother to work out his marriage is the officer actually married doesn't act like he is um seems to enjoy spending time checking up on jill and providing you know his company to go look at dogs and um, stopping in to see her when news dropped about amy being missing and things like that so yeah 
a little bit strange there. In their interactions with each other, I think there is something possibly going to happen between Jill and the officer, but that remains to be seen um, as we find out more about his about his marital status. So, yeah. So far, I'm still really enjoying this book. One more thing I am finding a little weird is how her aunt is kind of like come in and take over, took over her shop and is making all of these decisions without running them by Jill. Like, yeah, she asked you for help, but she didn't ask you to take over her business. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that was a little weird. Um, in any case, I am still really enjoying this book. I'm finding it really entertaining. I am getting some work done on my dad's sock at the same time. I think <laughs> as I was knitting on the sock as I was listening to the audiobook, I think I bit off a little bit more than I could chew because I completely forgot that I am knitting up a sock for a man. And just looking at the finished sock that I finished for my dad, it is super huge compared to a sock I would knit for me. So I highly doubt that I will get this sock done by the time this project is over, especially because we don't have very many sections in on this particular book. So we have three sections left, and I don't think I'm going to be able <laughs> to get this sock done, but maybe I'll get past the heel by the time this is done. I am almost finished with the cuff. Um, so, yeah, we shall see. As long as I am getting some progress done on this um, Christmas gift net, that is great. And I am still enjoying listening to the audiobook and spending my time absorbing the book and working on a project. So, yeah, things are really good at the moment. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow's chapters. So let me know what you thought of today's chapters down in the comments below. Definitely chime in on your thoughts about the relationship between Jill and the officer. Do you think that it's going to go somewhere um, maybe later in this book or in subsequent installments? Because obviously we don't know what's going to happen for the rest of this book. What do you think about how Jill answers the phone? Like, even when she had picked up the phone at the house and immediately thought it was Amy just because she had called her recently. I thought that was kind of strange. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. Are you listening to an audiobook copy or are you reading a physical? Do you have the same issue with the cadence of the sentence? As I have, well, it's not really an issue. It's more of a just a nagging something for me. But let me know what you think of how the narration is presented if you are listening to an audiobook copy. And that will pretty much do it for me this evening. So I will be back with you tomorrow for chapters 9 through 12. And I hope you're all having a great evening and I will talk to you later. Bye!